in Generation 2, they introduced shiny Pokémon, dooming many a Pokémon fan to hundreds upon hundreds of hours of grinding. But were these Pokémon all hand-designed with purpose, or were they programmed with an algorithm? That's what we dove into in the last shiny video, so I super recommend you check that out. We uncovered so many patterns and rules that basically confirm that we don't know for sure. So check that out if you're interested, and in the meantime, let's go over every single Generation 2 shiny Pokémon and see if there's a reason behind its new colors, or if it's entirely... Just because. Is this you? Do you have hands on the internet? Why yes! I do go on the internet and have hands! Thankfully, these are wood, so they're totally organic, so I don't have to worry about my skin! Aha! That's true! But you do have to worry about your privacy being invaded. What?! Unless you're using NordVPN, you are not as safe as you could be on the internet. Have you ever been to TikTok without a VPN? Then you might be just who China's looking for. But enough about safety. Safety doesn't sell. You want access to more media to consume. Well, thanks to VPNs, you can make the internet think that you're someplace where media is allowed. And thus you'd be allowed to see the media. You want to unlock all the media, don't you? And no VPN is as trusted or has as many reviews that are positive as NordVPN. And with a super fast connection and money back guarantee if you're unhappy, there's no reason not to take advantage of the deal that they're doing right now through us. You can get 68% off of a two year plan and a month free by using the coupon code LOXTIN. And the link down below, of course. Thanks so much to NordVPN for supporting us and thank you for checking them out. A lot of shiny Pokemon just follow rules, like blue or cyan swapping with red or pink. A lot of water type Pokemon get an aquamarine shift, and lots of grass types get autumn colors. Which is the case with the Chikorita line. They get more yellow and brown, autumn colors, they are plants, and the periness is swapped for banana, I guess. The Cyndaquil and company turn brown, because it's boring, but it is more realistic to real shrews and badgers. You know, they don't tend to be a cool greenish blue realistically, but Totodile's line gets a greenish tint as if they were underwater, just like most water type Pokemon. But the red swaps for blue because that's also extremely common in Chinese. But I mean, the blue is more watery. So there's that. They're more watery. Sentret is a sort of generic mammal thing, a tanuki flying squirrel ferret meerkat. Most of those are all dark brown, and that fits Sentret. But meerkats tend to be lighter tan, like it's shiny. Furret turns pink because it's cute, but actually, even this drastic change is explained in the video that we delved into the potential code of the game that was changing the shinies. I'm not gonna stop shilling that video, check it out. Hoot and Noctowl. They turned golden. These Pokemon were introduced as the highlight of Pokemon Gold and Silver's new day and night cycle, and as such, Hoot Hoot has clock elements in its design. The gears and clock hands in its eyebrow eyeliner stuff, and their heads rotate, you know, like the hands of a clock. And clock gears come in many shiny colors, especially gold. Letty Bun letting in turn orange. Orange ladybugs are real, and they are close relatives of Asian ladybugs. Spinarak goes from green to blue, and Arya goes from red to pink, and also the light blue is there. Uh, they are combinations of a few different spiders, but one of these is the Joro spider, which has variants with this light blue, and even pink. Ah! Crobat turns pink. When bats are albino, they tend to be quite pinkish too. Chinchou and Lantern just get their underwater filters, though Lantern is notably darker, perhaps because the fish it's based on usually live in the dark depths of the ocean. Pichu, like Pikachu, just gets darker because you can't really change Pikachu too drastically, you know? Cleffa's ears turn green because its line are from the moon, like little green aliens. Igglybuff gets more saturated, it's a cute pink balloon, not much else to it. Togepi and Togetic's shape pattern inverts, and otherwise, it too just gets darker. It's a very mild species variant. And Natu and Zatu yellow the heck up. They pull from a number of tropical birds like parrots, cockapoes, and the resplendent quetzal. And birds, especially tropical birds, come in many colors. 
yellow included. Marie Plaffy and Ampharos all pinking up. So pink! I can see it as a reference to cotton candy, as it's super fluffy, just like their wool. Also, the act of dyeing your sheep a certain color is actually common, and pink tends to be the most common color there. There's even a film festival named after it. Originally, Bill Awesome Shiny had his face become the same color as its alternative evolution, Vile Plume, but it was later made pink, likely just because it's a rather feminine Pokemon. But interestingly, looking at its original Shiny, it had red flowers, while the non-Shiny had pink flowers. These would be swapped in the later generations. The Rafflesia plant that it's based on don't really have a pink variety, which might be why. Meryl and Azumarill's shinies are pretty drastic. Green and yellow. It's odd, and these Pokémon don't really have a reason for being blue in the first place either, other than being water type. They are a cross between a beach ball and a swamp rabbit, or Rakali. Maybe even the shape of a water molecule if you squint. You know? If there is a reason for them being these colors, it can't be much more than beach ball colors, because both the light green and yellow are fun, bright, summery beach colors. Pseudowoodo, autumn colors. Politoed is crazy. Poison dart frogs come in all sorts of crazy colors and combinations of them, but from what I could tell in my research, never pink and blue at the same time though. Sometimes they come close, but not really. So this shiny just invokes the same energy as these frogs rather than specifically referencing a specific poison dart frog. Hopip is just green now because it's a plant what does it even do? But Skiploom and Jumpluff turn pink. Again, maybe because of cotton candy. But dandelions actually do come in pink. Mm. Apom also just turns pink. I guess it's because it's cute. But like with bats, when albino, mini monkeys have their pink skin show through more through the thin white fur. Sunflora and its Prevo, that I always forget exists, uh, they're just autumn colors. And like the red and blues of the Gen 2 sprites, Yanma swaps the saturated red for a saturated blue. But at least blue dragonflies are pretty common. Wooper and Quagsire are pink now. Pink Axolotl. Pink Salamander. Espeon is disgusting. Why? Why would you do that? What did I... What did I do? to deserve you doing this. It's bad. Espeon is a Bakaneko or a Nekomata. It's also a psychic. None of that has to do with this forest green color though, or like it's older sprites. Lime. Ew. Slap it on a thumbnail with a black background, it'll pop. No! But shiny Umbreon looks cool and more mystical. The cool, dim, blue glow of the moon may be being referenced. Depending on where you are and when, moonlight can be cool or warm, reflecting Umbreon's two colors. Murkrow is pink. And Slowking is darker and has blue frills now. And clothes can be any color. I call this color Misdreavous Mustard. Its hair kinda looks like it was drawn with mustard, right? So, Misdreavus is partially inspired by the Roku Rokubi, an old yokai, and the paper that classical yokai art is painted on tends to be aged and has such yellowed since then. So, you know, all sorts of classical Japanese monsters are associated with this color because of old paper. Huh? Unknown, the beings that live in the backstage of reality, holding the universe together, turn blue. Like Lapis Lazuli, an ancient stone that's been attributed to many mystical things, the ancient Egyptians saw it as a piece of the heavens in physical form, sort of like the unknown. The ancient Sumerians saw it as the flesh of the gods, and even in the Old Testament, Exodus 24.10 mentions that God stands on a surface paved out of it. Deep stuff. The heavens. Unknown. Wobbuffet is pink, which is actually a pretty common color for punching bags. Girafferig really has no reason for the pink things to begin with, so blue is also good, really. The, the, the blue nose, though. Uh, 
That happens when they get frostbite, and this this giraffe already has frostbite. Pineco and Foratris have just dirty natural autumn colors again. It's Suchinoko! I mean Dunsparce. Pink! Again, because it's cute! Common depictions of Suchinokos are pink from time to time, just because it's cute. Gligar is a combination of a few things, but looking at the main one, the scorpion fly, we see that there are blue scorpion flies. Right when you thought they couldn't get any scarier, they just... Blue isn't a scary color, actually. So I guess that's fine. Steelix! More like Goldix! I shouldn't say that. Snubbles colors! Sort of swap places, but they also do stuff to the feet and the ears, and it's... Let's just say they somehow managed to make Snubble even uglier. I have no idea. And Grand Bowl is just like yellow lab colors now, I guess. Some bulldogs are this color too, but like, they could have made it green. That'd have been cool. The Celtic fairy dog that it's based on is green. Quillfish is pink now too. Uh. Scizor is now the color of its previous evolution, Scyther. Shuckle still does the classic sprite swap thing, red to blue. Well, Chuckle is also a combination of many things, and one of them, the Barnacle, does have a bluish variety. I, I suppose. It's blue. Uh, Heracross is pink. It's a Hercules beetle, and the Jewel Scarab is similar enough to the Hercules beetle, and it's pink. Pink Sneasel. Hmm. Uh, again, the closest thing is that albino weasels have some pink show through. Teddy Ursa and Ursaring are green. Green bears? Or wait, green teddy bears. This is Teddy Ursa, it's a teddy bear. There's plush bears of every color, green included. Slugma is gray. It's it's lava after it cools off, hmm, I guess? It's a rock. And Magcargo is pink. According to its Pokedex entry, its body temperature is 18,000 degrees. Now, the science as to why is incredibly complex, so I won't go into it, but its glow at this temperature would actually be a very light purplish because of it. Much lighter than its actual shiny, but hey! Purplish! Swinub is a little baby wild boar, and sometimes these boars are considered a grayish green color. But, Piloswine is yellow, and yellow wild boar are significantly easier, because it's just, it's just straight up a thing. Corsola, it's the pink to blue thing again. Coral comes in many colors, light blue included. Remoraid, Remora fish, can be quite purpley actually. Let's just check it out. But a golden artillery? Well yeah, there are yellow octopus. And there are brass cannons, so it's both. Delibird becomes pink to be a little more non-traditional, and Mantine is a lot bluer just because it's water type. Skarmory appears made to be out of, out of grammar. It's made to be out of grammar. Uh, Skarmory appears to be made out of more rudimentary steel now, or iron plating. And green just goes with that color, I suppose. Uh, Houndour and Houndoom are blue dogs now, and because of their oily coats, Doberman Pinchers can sometimes appear bluish when outside in the right lighting. Mm -hmm. Kingdra is pinky purple. Some seahorses are pinky purple. Fanpy is almost exactly the same. So it's... It's, it's like it just walked into a room where the, like, the light bulb is... A different temperature. Uh, why? Dawn Fan looks like it's been off-roading. Porygon 2 is designed digital code and thus can be any color. Stantler. Smeargle is all about pain and <laughs> I meant paint. Not pain. Uh, it's just Smeargle! Its existence is all about pain! Struggling artists. <laughs> Commission's open. <laughs> he screams into the void. Uh, but yeah, paint can be any color. Okay, so Stantler for real now. I've got almost nothing. Almost. It's said that it's a Sika deer mixed with a Shishi Odoshi, and those are sometimes green, so I guess. 
Tyrogue and Hitmontop changed their outfits, and also their race. Smoochum found her mother's makeup puff. Elekid, wow, that change is nothing. Magby's orange is a different color of fire. Miltank is blue. Here's a Belgian blue cow. It's kind of bluish. Also, it's the pink to blue thing again that a bunch of sprites did back in the day. Uh, Blissey is even more angelic and nursery-esque. Raikou is more accurate to actual tiger colors. Entei is, I guess, just more burnt up and natural. And Suicune just looks colder or more watery. Larvitar is just more saturated, and Pupitar, <laughs> oh, I get it, more like purplitar. And Tyranitar's colors make it look a bit sun bleached, or like it's in the middle of a sandstorm, which is kind of what it's all about. Blugia does the blue to pink thing again, and I guess belugas can sometimes be a little pinkish, again, in the right light. Uh, and Ho-Oh is now gold and silver colors of the games it's from. Oh yeah, the mythical. And then Celebi, finally, is pink. Because... It's a girly fairy. So overall, I think the Gen 2 Pokémon get the short end of the stick compared to Gen 1 Pokémon. But maybe I missed something, because I researched and wrote this while I had the freaking coronavirus. So let me know if I missed anything down in the comments, and I'll see you on the next one. Maybe next time I won't be short of breath the whole time while recording. <laughs>